Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing the Miyoko's Liquid Vegan Pizza Mozzarella, and I'm going to tell you guys why I think it is truly the best vegan pizza cheese of all time. It's really a breakthrough in vegan cheese, in my opinion. And we're also going to discuss why it's a huge improvement from their original recipe, mozzarella wheel. <laughs> So first order of business is that I have to go and buy the cheese. So how they did their release with this particular product is that they released it to small health food stores first um, before they're doing a more wide release. And I don't exactly know if there's like a business reason or some kind of logistical reason behind that, but I personally thought it was really cool because it felt like a, a little boost or support for health food stores rather than Whole Foods. Our local health food store has had the pizza cheese every time we've been there. Hopefully today will be no different. And then of course I have to pick up the pizza. Now we've used this pizza cheese, you know, making our own pizza using our own crust at home. But why do that when you have access to one of the most famous pizza places in the world? Why, why not take advantage of that? So that's exactly what we'll be doing today and I am so excited. Let's go. I don't know what is going on today. There's so much traffic. It's like 2.30 on a Wednesday. So much traffic. The store was packed. Okay, so I am now going to call for my pizza. For to-go orders, press two. Perfect, New Haven, I can help you. Hi, I'd like to order a pizza to, uh, to go for pickup. Yeah, we'll take it for you. Um, can I get a large tomato pie, um, but, but with no cheese, just tomato sauce? So you just want to do the plain red? Yeah, I guess, yeah. With just sauce, uh, gotcha. Yeah, just with sauce. no mozzarella, right? Just the uh, pecorino? No cheese at all. Gotcha. Can I get it slightly underbaked? Because I'm- Slightly baked, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so no, no cheese, right? No cheese at all, yep. Okay. Thank you. Mariel? Yes. Gotcha. Thank you so much. I'll see you in about 20, 25 minutes, all right? Okay, perfect. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. I feel like you guys just witnessed, like, prime example of how insane we have to sound when we're talking to restaurants. Like, so no cheese, right? So no cheese, you got that? No cheese? So like, zero cheese, right? So no cheese? When I was like, I just, I want it with no cheese at all. And he's like, okay, so no mozzarella, just the pecorino. I'm like, no cheese at all. That was funny. Google Maps already was like, Frank Beppes, is that where you're going? Head southwest on Norton Street. See ya when I get the pizza. I have secured the goods. Where is my hand sanitizer? Oh my god, seriously. Cars should just have hand sanitizer dispensers in them. Shark Tank, watch out, here I come. Here it is. It smells good. My question is, do I be a little bit micromanagey and check it to make sure it's right? And the answer is yes, I'm going to, because in the past when I've said, oh, Marielle, don't be so, you know, nervous or whatever, it's going to be fine. There have been times when I have regretted it. Nope, looks perfect. They cooked it the way I wanted to. Okay, we're good to go. And now for the fun part. A lot of running around, but we're back and I've got my pizza, I've got my cheese, I'm so excited, 
So let's discuss. So the Italian style mozzarella wheel, I believe was Miyoko's first ever product. Gonna double check that, but it was certainly one of their earliest products. And for a long time, this was like the stuff. This was the best option for pizza. This was the best option for, you know, caprese salads and anything else you would use mozzarella for. But there were definitely some issues with it. And when they came out with this new product, what's really amazing is that they clearly listened to the feedback and they fixed all of the major issues with the original mozzarella. Maybe you guys have heard of this and been wanting to try it, but haven't. Maybe you have tried it and have your own opinions about it. Maybe you haven't even heard of it at all. So I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know. We first tried this a few weeks ago. Like I said, it was only available in select health food stores. So I was really excited to see it in one of our local stores. And I tried it out. I did a little demo of it on Instagram and I think people were really blown away by how it looked, which you guys will see when I use it today. People were just very intrigued by it, and I think this is one of those products that just creates a lot of intrigue and interest. So let's discuss the issues with the original mozzarella. The first issue is the packaging. So it comes in this, I don't even know what you would call this package, but it's like this, you know, there's plastic around the cheese, and then there's like a thicker plastic layer on top. And then there's this thinner plastic layer and this little tiny, tiny, tiny flap that you're supposed to be able to hypothetically peel it open. Now, I remember I used to be able to peel it open pretty easily, but I think they've changed the packaging and it is the most frustrating thing trying to peel this open, especially if you have any length of nail, like if you have any nail at all, it's pretty much impossible to get a good enough grip to open it. Like why couldn't they make the flap part a little bit bigger? What you end up having to do then is use scissors um, and cut, you know, really close to the cheese to get an opening where you need it to open, you know? Um, so inevitably your scissors get dirty, you have to wash them. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is that it's really hard to work with. Let's say you wanna use it for a pizza and you wanna grate it. If you try to hold it by hand and grate it, it's just, it's very mushy. It's mushy in your hand. And when you're grating, it doesn't come out as like nice sprinkles. It just kind of comes out as mush on the other side that you then have to kind of pull off with your finger somehow and then it's hard to sprinkle on the pizza because it gets very clumpy. Now you could just put it in chunks on the pizza like you would have like you know kind of chunks of mozzarella melted onto a pizza but this brings us to our third issue which is that it doesn't melt very well and that's why we always grate it because the chunks just don't really melt. What's interesting is that when I first tried this product probably back five or more years ago, I remember it melting really well. I remember using it on pizza and it would, it would melt into these little pools on the pizza, which is sort of what you want if you're going for a whatever style pizza that is, where there's like little pools of mozzarella. It did that really well, but at some point they must have changed the recipe and I'm not sure why or exactly when, but it stopped being able to melt. Like it essentially just holds its shape in the oven. And that's just not what you want for pizza, right? You want your cheese to be melted and kind of spread out at least to a certain extent. So that's issue number three. So issue number four relates back to issue number one with the packaging, which is that it's not convenient to store. You would think that with a package where you're just peeling it open, that you could just sort of press it back down and kind of have it reseal in a way, but because you have to essentially maim the package in order to get the cheese out, then you have to store it now in a separate container, which isn't the end of the world, but there's just a lot to be desired on the packaging front, in my opinion. So like I said, Miyoko's obviously heard some of this feedback or noticed it for themselves, was aware of it, and pivoted with their liquid mozzarella just totally came out with something completely different, but it addresses every single one of the issues that I just mentioned. Number one, packaging. As you can see, it comes in this bottle, and instead of having to peel and cut and just get so frustrated about, this is what you have to do. 
that's it. And it's open. So we're gonna move into the next phase where I'm actually putting my pizza together, getting it ready to go in the oven. Now the instructions say to preheat your, preheat your oven to 350. I have found that, I, I mean, I've never actually preheated it to 350, but anytime I go like above 400, it's just too hot. Like maybe if you were using a crust that hadn't been baked at all, but for the most part I've been using pre-baked crust, so it is a little tricky to get it so that it melts the way you want but doesn't burn your crust. Like I mentioned, I had them undercook my crust a bit. All this to say that I'm preheating my oven to 375, so let's move into the fun part. Now, I love Pepe's, but they, they do have some very interesting ways of cutting their pizza. <laughs> This is our first time getting a large, so maybe that's why, but the, the pizza cutter got really artistic with it. I am supposed to shake the bottle, so let me do that. You guys might be wondering what this tastes like just on its own. It kind of just tastes like, almost like a yogurt, but a little more salty. You know, of course it has that tart cultured Miyoko's taste, but yeah, it definitely, I guess, tastes like what their mozzarella would taste like if liquefied, which makes total sense because that's what it is. So we are now going to get into the second thing that I love about this cheese versus the original recipe, and that is going to be the ease of use. So instead of grating and getting your hands all dirty and having the grater be all mushy and trying to work with that mushy grated cheese, we simply pour the liquid cheese over the pizza. Now they say don't do too much, you know, don't over pour. Obviously it's kind of up to you. I'm maybe being a little bit heavy handed, but as you can see, it basically looks like I'm just pouring like heavy cream all over my pizza. That's how it now looks. This is certainly the biggest pizza that I've used this on so far, so try and do the right amount, not overdo it. And I'm gonna be using some basil from our Aero Garden, using as much as I could harvest today. The crispy basil really gives it that extra something. So now I'm going to transfer these pieces to my um, air fryer baking sheets just because I think that's gonna give me the best result in terms of keeping the crust nice and crispy and I will show you what happens in the oven. It's about 10, maybe 15 minutes later. I did end up turning up the temperature to 400. I did feel like it could use a little more heat. So as you can see, it really just kind of incorporated really well. Um, it didn't brown up too much, um, maybe a little bit here and there, but I'm sure I could have gotten it a little more browned if I had, you know, hiked up the temperature even more. And so now I can share with you guys the number three thing that I love about this product, which is, you know, sort of the polar opposite of the original Miyoko's mozzarella, which is that it melts like a dream. Now, because it's liquid, it doesn't really have that much work to do in terms of melting, but that's why it's such an ingenious creation, I think. They had this issue of, you know, this cheese and most vegan cheeses just don't melt very well on pizza. And so what do we do? Let's just get it in its melted form first and then heat it up and cook it and melt it even more. I love the way that it just sort of like incorporates and, and melts in with the sauce. Like this just looks like pizza from a restaurant. This just looks like regular pizza. It doesn't look like vegan pizza. You know, all vegan pizza kind of has that look of like the shreds that didn't really melt all the way. And this, I think, could, could possibly trick some people. So now, one of the most important parts, let's see how it tastes. 
even though I already know, but just to confirm with you guys how good it is, this is the piece that probably got the most browned, and let's try it. Mm. Oh my god. And this is why I went to Pepe's, because that tomato sauce, you can't find that tomato sauce anywhere. And the crust is so good, and with the cheese, it's just like the perfect combination. And the crispy basil. Honestly, I think I could have even gone a little bit more heavy-handed with my pours. I thought I was doing a little too much, but I think I even could have gone a little extra, but I didn't want to overdo it. Got like flour all over my camera. It's wonderful. So, so far we've got three things that I love about this product. The ease of packaging use, the ease of using the actual product, the way it melts, and lastly, number four, if you remember my complaint about the original mozzarella was ease of storage and how much easier could this be? You just put the cap back on, put it back in the fridge, that's it. So the last thing I love about this is just how freaking easy and simple and no mess it is. Like there's no mess. You just drizzle it, like there's nothing else that got dirty in this process other than my camera. They just, they hit it out of the park. What can I say? It's amazing. Another thing I'll mention is that it's hard to tell exactly how much I used, but I, from the weight of it, I think I definitely used less than half of the bottle and that was for a large pizza. Um, I remember when we had this before, we actually ended up like getting rid of some because we didn't even use the whole bottle and we made, I think, four pizzas with it. So they definitely give you a lot and price-wise, I think it's definitely a better value than the original. This was around seven something at the store today. I think it was on sale and the wheel that I got was like eight something, which I think was also on sale. When we use the original wheel for pizzas, I would say if we're both making like a personal size pizza, we use about half the wheel for two personal size pizzas. So in terms of value and price, you're getting more bang for your buck with this product too. I could go on and on and on, but I wanna eat this pizza. I know Paul does too. And I think I've made all the points I needed to make. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I hope you're as excited about this product as I am. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if it made your mouth water. Subscribe to my channel for more of my content and I'll see you again soon. Bye.